Hello, I'm Dr. Jay Greenspan. Back in the day when Paul and I were young, there was a food pyramid, and we stuck by that. Over the years, it's gone through a number of transformations, and to help us understand what it looks like today is Jackie Constantino, a registered dietitian at Nemours. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you. And joining me today with his pyramid is Paul. Hi, Paul. Hello, Jay. So uh, what is the food pyramid? How's it changed? How do we know what best to put on our child's plate? The food pyramid was the USDA's food icon back in 1992. <laughs> so that has changed over the past 20 years a lot. And you know, it was updated in 2005 to my pyramid. And then it was recently updated in 2011 to my plate. So that's the newest icon. It has changed not to confuse consumers, but you know, it's changed as we've learned more about nutrition and our eating habits and just making sure we have the easiest picture for people to look at and really understand how we should be eating. So yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the, the reason for the changes. And Jackie, from the picture of the plate versus the pyramid, it looks like the plate's emphasis is more on portion control. Right, yeah. So the reason for the switch from my pyramid to my plate was really to simplify and show how to create a healthy plate. So, you know, my pyramid had all the five food groups and they were kind of just slivers on the my plate. It didn't really show people, you know, how they should be eating at each meal. So that's the benefit of the my plate. And Jay, uh, as you know, at Nemours, we have our own um, sort of recommendation where we stress not only the healthy food, but also limiting screen time and limiting sugary drinks right. and exercise as well. And and just from looking at my plate, it looks like it's more the emphasis on just sort of the diet, mm -hmm. um, but not there's, there's no mention of the exercise. or. Yeah, so that actually is one of the changes from my pyramid to my plate. On my pyramid, you could see a person walking up the steps on the side of the pyramid, um, and yeah, and there's not one on the my plate. I would say that's a limitation to the my plate, but the reasoning for that was really to just simplify it, to intrigue consumers to dig deeper and go on choosemyplate.gov, and that's where they can learn really more about it. Because as you can see, my plate it really doesn't give much detail. My pyramid has individual, actually, pictures of foods, so you can kind of see maybe what were the better choices. Where my plate, you're right, it emphasizes the portions, making half your plates roots and vegetables, a quarter grains, and a quarter meats, and a serving of dairy. But you really don't know, you know, what the healthier choices are. But if you go to the, the website, that's where you learn about the healthier choices and the exact portion sizes that you need. So Jackie, some of the beliefs we've had about dietary habits over the last couple of years have changed. What are some of the important examples of these changes? So it used to be a common belief that consuming fats was making us fat or was unhealthy. The very old My Pyramid had fats on the very tippy top of My Pyramid and basically emphasizing that we really shouldn't eat that many fats. And that still is the recommendation, you know, fats in moderation because they provide a lot of calories, but we definitely have learned that they have a lot more health benefits than we used to know. So we do know now that there are healthy fats and there are unhealthy fats. So the polyunsaturated fatty acids and the monounsaturated fatty acids, which are found in fish, nuts, and vegetable oils, those are very good for us. And they actually lower the LDL or the bad cholesterol in our blood which is unlike saturated fats, which is found in solid fats like butter. And we also talk a lot about omega-3 fatty acids now because they've gotten a lot of attention for their effect on cardiovascular disease, inflammation, and brain and nerve health. And because of this, we recommend eating fish like tuna or salmon or mackerel twice a week. So that's really one good example of how our dietary habits have changed. Another one is the increased interest for local fresh whole foods Everybody wants to you know eat local and organic. And then another one would be how vegetarian diets are a lot more accepted than they used to be. It wasn't as accepted years ago, and now it's considered you know the green, more environmentally friendly um, way to eat. And vegetarians have many options when they go out to eat now. And we do know that a vegetarian diet can be very healthy. You mentioned organic, Jackie. I mm -hmm. I, um, I usually don't do the food shopping, mm -hmm. but I 
got some stuff last weekend from the store when we came back from vacation. Mm-hmm. I came in and my wife said, you know, you didn't buy the organic milk and you didn't buy the organic eggs and, you know, everything mm-hmm. I bought, I wasn't, I wasn't really paying attention. Mm-hmm. But it seems mm-hmm. like in all these food groups, there's a lot of uh, organic options out there. Right. There is a lot of organic options. And the thing about eating organic is that we just don't know enough. There's not research showing that not eating organic is going to cause long-term health effects. However, we just don't know. So people who eat organic are probably more skeptical. They don't know what's going to happen. So they rather just eat organic. Personally, I don't eat organic. But, you know, it's really at your, (laughs) I know, (laughs) but I don't think it's a bad thing. And, you know, it's really just your preference and what you're willing to risk. But we all can agree that Mm -hmm. Paul's a really bad shopper. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What about dairy? Sure. So dairy does kind of get criticized because this is a kind of a good topic where you don't want to just look at individual studies, but you really need to look at the whole broad range of research that's out there. And a lot of people think because in other countries, there's lower incidence of osteoporosis and they have lower intake of dairy. Here we have higher intakes of dairy and we have higher rates of osteoporosis. However, there are many differences between different countries. And there's a ton of research that shows that dairy and calcium are very important for preventing osteoporosis and fractures in the elderly. So the overall message is dairy is very important for your bone health. Right. Yeah. And so some of the take home message that you're giving us from this MyPlate is it's available to mm-hmm. help parents if they're looking for help. It's about portion control. And we've had a chat on obesity mm-hmm. and how big a problem that is for us. And that it's a a little bit about enjoying your food and and giving yourself some options. Is that? That's definitely it. Yeah. Everything in moderation is really it. Balanced diet, having a variety of foods in your diet. So you're getting a variety of different nutrients, trying to drink less soda, less high sodium foods, and eat more fruits and vegetables, making sure you're getting enough dairy, lean, lean dairy, low fat dairy, lean meats. You know, having your sweet treats, but just in moderation. Right. Mm -hmm. And the MyPlate does show portion control that the pyramid really didn't show. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great information. Um, (laughs) And and where can people find MyPlate, that information? They can find that at Mm choosemyplate.gov. So this is a sort of a government recommendation about how to help families pick the best foods for their kids. Right. Exactly. Yes. Thanks so much for clearing that up for us. And uh and we'll go home and, and find our my plate dinner tonight. Uh, thanks for joining us, Jackie. You're welcome. Thank you. To our listeners, if you have a question about this topic, or if there's another topic you'd like us to explore in a future pediatric chat, you can send it to us by using the question portal on our webpage. And be sure to view our library for more pediatric chat programs. I'm Dr. Jay Greenspan, and thanks for listening.